Hi, I'm Superintendent Carol Kavanaugh, and welcome to our show, Highlights from the Hill. I'm here with my co-host, Jim Cousins, and also the principal of the Elmwood Elementary School, Mrs. Ann Carver, and her assistant principal, Jason Demon. Highlights from the Hill is the show that brings you all things going on inside the Hopkinton Public Schools. So welcome, Ann. Welcome, Jason. Thank, thank you. you. And thank, thank you, you for agreeing to be here with us today. Sure. My pleasure. Um, I am going to start out by asking Jason how he likes working at the Elmwood School because he's brand new to us. I love it. <laughs> um, every day. We were just talking about th that this morning, actually. Uh, it's one of those jobs for me that you, you just, it's like, I, I, I don't even care if I get paid or not. It's just fun <laughs> to be with my, my Shh, principal here. The dangerous <laughs> time of year to say that, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Take that back. Yeah, no um, one says that in budget season. <laughs> But there's never a uh, same day twice, and that's what I love mm -hmm. about it. Nice, yeah. And um, it probably doesn't feel to you like you're brand new anymore because you've actually been here since July 1st. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was uh, welcomed right into the team, uh, our administrators, and we had the, the retreat. Mm -hmm. That was excellent to meet everybody and get to know the whole district. Um, I think my very first days, uh, teachers were coming in and out, like, and a lot of people don't know that teachers do a lot of work in the summers and I love coming into a classroom where there were uh, teachers working on curriculum and got to get to know teachers and you know it, for me it was so easy to meet people got there's some 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 things teachers have been to or have you know uh, or have done I've had some uh, familiarity with so um, so and everybody's very friendly so it was it was great to great intro so I will ask the two of you, what are the big things happening at Elmwood this year? Well, I don't, uh, I don't know that they're new to this year, but something that we're, of course, starting to talk about is Kenya Day. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing at Elmwood School. So we're, we're just, as soon as the calendar changes, we start to make our plans. People probably don't know that either, that it takes almost half a year to kind of put it all together. Um, but we're busy right now in in terms of teachers and students we're busy taking mid-year assessments and spending Jason and I have been spending lots of time with teachers talking about what does your data look like how are students progressing what's happening with anyone whose progress is slow or concerning um, what are we doing about progress that's how do we celebrate progress when we when we see that um, that, that great news um, and so we're just we call it sort of data time at Elmwood in, in January. Um, what else is happening that's exciting? We Deliver started uh, mm -hmm. right after the holidays and that's a very big, I, I wish I had, um, I, I think it's 22 or 23 years that We Deliver has been going on at Elmwood School. So um, that's something that little people when they, you know, 23 years ago, they're, they're having families of their own now. Mm -hmm. And there aren't mm -hmm. m all that many things that happen in public education that sort of stand that test of time. Um, but kids are busy writing letters. I think we, we announced this morning on the um, morning announcements that it was a record-breaking 700 letters had been um, distributed yesterday. By the fir by the Tuesday session, and I, if I had to guess, I'd say 500 of them were delivered to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I'm. Did you respond to all I of them? I, I think that I, I d have announced several times this year, Tim, that I respond to every letter that nice. I get. I, I do type it. Yeah. Um. So, but if you read the note, you'd know that I uh, the kids ask questions, I answer. Yeah. They want to know what my favorite color is. Do I have children? What do I do on the weekends? Um, lots of kids ask, what is it like to be a principal? Do I like my job? They'll mention a, a time recent, oh, it was fun when you were in my classroom on Monday. I wish you'd come back. That's kind of nice to hear. And uh, uh, mo many of them start off with, you are a great principal. <laughs> so someone's coaching them to, <laughs> to start off. And, and then <clears throat> as it progresses, we will both get letters. Mr. Demon and I will both get letters that, that announce something cha something challenging kids will say you know please come into third lunch mm -hmm. there's somebody in there that's not following the rules or you should check the boys bathroom I, kids will start as they get going with this 
um, making us aware of things that we should know about that we might not know. So that's nice. That it's it's very sweet. Yeah. I yeah. got to see one of the We Deliver letters yesterday. Uh -huh. and the student <laughs> told Mrs. Carver that the Elmwood School had a bright, bright, bright future. Yes, yeah, <laughs> triple bright. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cute. It's, great. it's, very it's nice. really great to, to, to get a letter that's handcrafted, you know, yes. the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, instead of the, just the email or the text. Yeah. And, and these kids, and I, and I see them in the classroom working on these letters, putting a, a lot of thought into it and editing and so on and so forth. So yeah. uh, academically, too, there's, there's a purpose for it because they, they're using their ELA skills to, yep. to, to really make great letters. So I was wondering, can you tell me a little <laughs> bit about some of your responsibilities and what you do? Well, my main responsibility is to make sure our principal uh, is our building leader and um, our curriculum leader. And, and, and I find myself uh, doing a lot of the behavior uh, situations and mm -hmm. uh, bus reports and, and so on. But uh, I really pride myself on making sure Anne gets to do everything she needs to get done so that uh, she has the time to, you know, to be our, our building leader. Mm -hmm. I love working with teachers, uh, coaching. Uh, going into the classrooms, just making some observations and you know evaluations and things like that. Yeah. Uh, my, what I like to do outside of, of my job is really, I, I was, I did a lot of coaching with kids when I was, when I, uh, just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But I think with adults too, it's a, it's a different type of coaching. But I think the end result is that you want to be better at, at your craft, and that you know if there's uh, some ways that it can help another person. Uh, figure out a way to do that, then that's that's mm -hmm. really self-satisfying and, and and good for the whole, um, you know, right. company. Right. Now I'm just curious, how, how are you handling the growth that's happening all over the place? You know, I think growth is an opportunity for us. Uh, every day, it seems like every other day, a new child comes in, or mm -hmm. or, or, or a brother and sister uh, comes in, uh, and I and I believe for our teachers that. That, that might be a new thing, but, but it really helps you to understand where we are right now and, and what um, changes we can make to, to accommodate this growth mm -hmm. and to look at our practice and, and how we can incorporate that child you know, right away. Um, I, probably in the past, you've had a couple of days to prepare your classroom, but, but mm -hmm. s s literally we have kids coming that morning and, right. and, and you know, we've already assigned them a room, but the teacher has to ha has to sort of um, uh, you know, adapt to that situation. So I think in all phases, uh, whether it's upper administration, our administration, and down right down in the classroom, it's it's forcing us to to think quickly on our feet and, and adapt to what, what what's happening mm -hmm. around us. And there's no sh end end in sight because mm -hmm. it is a great town and it's a fantastic school system. Right. So right. we're just going to keep getting more kids. And how is it impacting impacting you? Well, one of the things that we did right away when Mr. Demon uh, joined our team was because our of because of space constraints, we decided to put have one um, administrator office, and so Jason and I share an office. And in the very beginning, I did let him know that if that felt like once we got going, that wasn't a, a good decision, we would would go with Plan B, mm -hmm. um, which I had not crafted yet <laughs> but I thought if this doesn't work out sharing a space um, we'll we'll try to figure something else out but we really needed we there are two offices out on either side of the main office and we really needed one for another purpose mm. so mr. demon was very gracious and and we moved all of his the desk and all of the things into my office and something that I an unexpected benefit of that was that we learned each other's style of, of um, leading immediately and I don't spend any time in our workday repeating conversations or talking about things that happened throughout the day that I think he needs to know before we start the next day. Uh, because we share a space, he sees the people that are in and out of the office. He meets the children that want to, you know, if he's meeting a student, I see that. If I'm meeting with a student, he sees that. If a family has a concern, we share it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was sort of a forced opportunity to get to know one another right away. And we didn't, uh, there was no lag time in our getting to, sort of figuring out a way to work together. And that was, um, so we, we took a situation that could have been considered challenging and, and benefited from it. And, and it's been really wonderful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about, I, 
one of the things that Mrs. Carver will often say is, you know, her kiddos, right, or her little people, <laughs> she calls them. <laughs> so tell us about your kids who are six and seven and eight. You know, how does that differ really from maybe teaching kids who are 12 and 13? Like, you really have a very specialized, um, I think, approach to, to what you're doing with children because of their age and their developmental um, stages. I, I really have no experience with any, in, in education speaking, um, with students that are beyond the, the fifth grade, personal experience. Uh, so I've always, all of the years that I've been an educator, I've worked with little people. Um, but what I've learned over time is that while behaviors of little people and probably all people can be extremely challenging, little people are also really fragile because they're developing and their egos are developing and when you're seven years old the world is all about me um, and so it's very it can be challenging to approach a, a situation with a child and and keep in mind that their world is very egocentric um, but that's part of understanding kids at this age uh, kids are enthusiastic they're impulsive they are busy they are moving all the time um, and, and if you don't take into consideration all of those things, then you're not likely to be as successful. Um, kids at this age just want to be known and recognized. The, I think one of the hardest things in my role is that children want to, when I say they want to be recognized, they want to know that you know their name. Mm -hmm. And when you have more than 500 students that, and, and that population turns over every year so that half of your building is brand new, it becomes really challenging to know children personally. So Mr. Demon and I both have to be out of our office, in the hallway, um, in classrooms, in the cafeteria, at recess, um, writing letters, greeting kids. They, the, they have to pass by our door to get to the nurse's office. Those are all opportunities for us to, to say, how are you? What can we do? What do you need? Um, and celebrate successes. We do see children to discipline um, when things happen on the bus or the playground or other places that does involve us, but we encourage staff to send kids to us when they're when they're celebrating too, mm -hmm. so that kids don't visit us just to because they've done something naughty. More often kids come to visit us because they've done something mm -hmm. spectacular and the teachers are able to use us as a reward. We're playing, you know, if you happen to come by my office and I'm playing Connect Four, it's not because I've taken a half an hour off, it's because a child earned you know, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes to play games with one of us or both of us. Um, and that's another way to get to know kids. And we try really hard that once we've met a child to use their name over and over again. Be, and you, as soon as I say a student by name, their heads will sort of snap around and make eye contact with me as if to say, you know me. Mm -hmm. And when kids know that you know them, then they're much more apt to be invested in the things that we're doing in our building. So it's really, it's, it's important and, and quite a challenge. Yeah, I think that, that sort of fits in with that whole sort of philosophy about the few and the many. You know, too often we are focused on the few and what happens to the many. Yeah. Um, it's really mm -hmm. refreshing to hear that at Elmwood School, it's every child every day. So it's lovely. Yeah, and, and kids are individual people too. And, you know, mm. we, our staff and ourselves, we, we get to school, we, we evade the traffic, we get through the, the morning rush at home. Uh, and we have to recognize that kids sometimes may have had a hard time getting to school that day, but as soon as they get off that bus, we're, we're greeting them, we're, you know, we're saying hello and recognizing them for, for the people that they are. And um, a number of my years teaching was, was spent on sixth, seventh graders, mm -hmm. and uh, having spent the last couple of years teaching, uh, being an administrator in a K-1-2 building and now a 2-3 building, uh, I really understand the this is where we are at Elmwood grades two and three is where we form the basis of their character, mm -hmm. you know, how, how they interact with people. Uh, and, and it's real clear to me, but going back to these letters, when they see, <laughs> when they see, when they talk to us about our, our jobs, be, the kids are watching. They're, they're watching us, they're watching their teachers, they're watching our professionals, they're watching the, all the adults in the building. They're watching parents. They're, 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 they're learning how to, to, to act in a civilized world. And, you know, between compromising, collaborating, um, being kind to each other, just greeting each other with a please and thank you or hello. Uh, these kids are very impressionable at this age, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, I believe we're doing a good job at Elmwood, you know, helping them to uh, become great characters. Yes. 
How many students do you have in your building? Oh, I don't know the exact number. 500, it's, it's 562 maybe, or? Yeah. Um, I, I know, I just saw, we're predicting 572 by the time Kenya Day begins, but I think we're at right around 562. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot of little people. But it's a happy place if you come down. It's a down. very happy place. Um, you know, every now and then we do have a, a sad customer, um, but they're at, at this age. The other nice thing about kids is they're so resilient and they bounce back really quickly. And mm -hmm. the, and as Jason said, the staff is incredible. We yes. have we, we have some folks in our building that have been there for quite some time, and we also have some new people this year. Um, and the paraprofessionals who greet our students as they come in every day, um, they are upbeat, happy. I can hear them as kids get off the bus you know, greeting kids by name, high-fiving them, thanking them for coming, telling them how happy they are that they're here. And those are all things that help a child, as Jason said, if they had a tricky morning, but they're getting off the bus, that that helps them to make their way to their spots, knowing, well, my morning might have been tricky, but I'm, I'm here, I'm safe. People know me, I'm, I'm ready to do my best work. And so it's a, it really is an incredible staff, and I think Jason has seen that. Um, that it's not it's not like other places where I've I've really? been it's mm -hmm. it's a lot of hard-working really dedicated people from the folks in the kitchen um, right through to every you know the custodian every person that's there is doing their best work and um, we appreciate that so I was wondering when a student comes into your school and then a student leaves your school for the next one um, what do you think are, for you is the most important things that they learn or they take away from your school? Well, as Jason said, having good character is the most important thing, mm -hmm. that they understand how to be a student. Um, the kids need to actually be taught what's expected, what listening looks like. Um, certainly you can sit in a classroom w when someone's giving instruction and be listening to what they're saying without appearing that you're listening and some of the hard work that teachers in second and third grade do is teaching a child that when you don't look like you're listening, people sometimes think that you're not. So helping kids to understand what whole body listening looks like, how to practice self-control, how to keep your hands to yourself, um, those are all really important skills. And we want kids to get to Hopkins School and be ready to learn to be available for the things that the next school will provide for them. The transitions are tricky, but we keep reminding kids that we are all hillers, that we're all expected to, to behave in a certain way and treat one another in a certain way. Um, kindness, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about kindness and um, we talk about things that are expected versus not expected. So if, if something happens between two children, we'll say, we might have a conversation about, um, what do you think that person expected you to do? Do you think they expected that behavior? So to help kids to understand um, the kinds of things that teachers are expecting them as a student and just as a person. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, obviously if they're on grade level academically, that's spectacular. But um, more importantly, if they can go to the next grade, understanding what a, what a student um, should be doing in a school and, and how people should treat one another, is, is more important. And once they get those things, usually the rest falls nicely mm -hmm. into place. <laughs> nice. If you had a magic wand, you could have whatever wish you wanted for the Elmwood School, what would your wish be? Oh, that's, that's a tricky one. Probably that the learning, the spaces that we have would be just right for the teachers that we, that we have doing the work. Um, when we did our DRA study and people asked, what do you need? What do you want? What's not working? Um, what's hard about Elmwood School? I, I honestly was really surprised to hear some of the responses that teachers shared. People don't spend a lot of time at Elmwood School complaining about the building, the facility, the bathrooms, um, the spaces. <coughs> And so I, I often sort of th go along thinking that it's, it's, it's all right. Um, but when I heard teachers saying, I don't have enough plugs um, for me to plug in all the technology that I'd like to use. I can't charge things that I want to charge overnight so that they're ready in the morning. Um, there's no heat in the ladies' room, in the faculty ladies' room. 
Those are things that True certainly <laughs> I know. Um, but when I hear people, our DRA study provided folks with an opportunity to sort of complain in a good-natured way to say, "What do you? What's what's troubling?" and what do you wish for? And so certainly I was, I was made aware of a lot of facility things that teachers would like. I would like teachers to be able to come to school and, and really do their best work um, in the facility that we have. And I think we, we do an incredible job. But I, I'm hearing people say that, it, you know, they, they'd like sure. uh, other, other things to help them with their right. work. So that would probably yeah. want. And a, a playground where kids could run free would mm -hmm. be really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we should be having a special town election where your four new classrooms hopefully will be approved by the town. Um, so I think that that will help your situation. Yes. But it doesn't give you more plugs. It doesn't give you heat in the ladies' room. So there are no. some shortcomings, certainly, to um, the Elmwood phys yeah. physical plant, yeah. right? And the kids would probably say an enhanced recess. We have a great playground with swings and, and sort of opportunities for kids to explore physically but there's no open space really mm -hmm. there's a as you come into Elmwood school there's a giant field but something that I've been talking with the buildings and grounds and the business office are there places at Elmwood that we're not making use of where we could maybe clear a path and create an opportunity for um, open space we mm -hmm. would love for kids to be able to run when they're when they're set free to the playground <laughs> For, for the children, if I had a magic wand, it would be that every child that leaves Elmwood has that confidence and resilience mm -hmm. to, to be successful at you mm -hmm. know, their next school or uh, whatever level they're going into. I think by virtue of the fact that in elementary school, the kids move on every two years, that, that has a sort of built-in uh, opportunity to practice that resiliency or, or ad adapting to mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they see it with our you know, older building where our, our teachers are, are adapting to what we have, being resourceful with, with the resources that we currently have. And uh, I think that's a trait not only kids need, but adults as well to, to, uh, to have that confidence and resilience to face any new situation. Mm -hmm. I think it says a lot that your magic wand didn't get you to your own private office. <laughs> <laughs> I love being in the same office with Anne, to be that's honest. Nice. Just, 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 just as she was saying, you know, I, I don't have to, I can hear if she's having a meeting with another teacher that, that I need to be part of. I can hear what's going on and, yeah. and, and doesn't have, we, we, it's actually a time saver for both of us, yes. I think, because there's never enough time during the day to get everything done. But It's amazing that, that some people out. would, you know, consider that a negative, but you've actually only talked about it in a positive way. And, and plus, we, she's pretty funny, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know that it would be a positive, right. and I did say, look, if you get in there after two days, if you feel like, nope. I can't, <laughs> I can't do this. Then we'll 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 figure it out. Yeah. But um, no, it's been it's been nice. Yeah, and I think you know the two of you have a way of taking things that might have been negatives and turning them into positives. So it's a little known fact that there's an area, a storage area in the Elmwood School, uh, fondly referred to, I believe, as the dungeon. Yes. And so and it's not in the basement. No, it's not. <laughs> But this space used to be just full of craziness, and little by little, they've taken all the resources out of there that have accumulated over years, and instead of purchasing paper, we've stapled them. I shouldn't say we. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Mrs. Carver and her, her team stapled them all together and somehow created all of these notebooks out of them, and you know they've been used over time, and now that space is kind of a quasi-lunch area for people. So. You know, it's really brought people together. It's made good use of resources, and I think that that's that's an indication of you know someone who is a good leader. Mm -hmm. You know that we always talk about taking lemons and making lemonade. That I think is probably the story of the Elmwood School, kind of in a nutshell. Right. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that it's a hallmark of of Hopkinton School District too. I mean, look at Center School. Center School had so many deficiencies, but. You know, when your kids go through, they, they just talk about the teachers. They just talk about how excited and happy and what great times they're having. Yeah. And there, we have a, one or two staff members who actually went to Elmwood when they were mm -hmm. um, little. So nice. now people are coming back and wanting to work there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that does speak to the fact that 
the physical surroundings, while they're important, I think we can still deliver really high quality instruction. Absolutely. Even in a building where there are some shortcomings. Right. So. When people are saying, here's what I would, as you said, with a magic wand, yes, I'd love this. But the way that we're currently functioning, there's, a, there's an amazing amount of high quality instruction that goes on. And, and it, it doesn't just happen in the classroom. While it certainly starts there, there's learning in the hallway, there's learning in the lunchroom, there's learning in the office, in the, you know, and Kathy Bain, the school nurse, uh, the things that I can overhear her saying to students in her office are just incredible. Um, she's, she's teaching so many important things there. The Sue and Joanne at the main office when they're greeting students and families um, for the first time or for the hundredth time, they are, are um, just incredible folks that are warm and welcoming and, and everyone who visits Elmwood tells comes often will come back and say, you know, it just feels warm and happy and, and we, we feel it too. So in our last minute, I'm wondering, Jason, is there something that happened this year that was very poignant or meaningful or just interesting or awesome for you? Sure, you I, th I think it was, um, it was school picture day and a student comes up to me and says, Mr. Deemer, I'm dressed like you today. <laughs> so uh, I felt like I made an impact, at least on uh, influencing um, wardrobe. But, <laughs> yeah. but no, I, I've, got, I've gotten to know this student as, as well as uh, all the students I've met and, mm -hmm. and worked with. And so I, I, it felt like home like right away. Right. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming here, but more importantly, for the job that you do for the kids in our community. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And thank you very much for tuning in for this episode. And we ask you to check out the rest of our episodes online or next month we'll be back with another one. Thanks. Take care. From the outside, it looked like I had it all together. Great education, good job, but inside I was massively insecure. Drinking helped me calm my fears, but I ended up losing everything. When I finally admitted I needed help, I came into Teen Challenge. And as time went on, I didn't feel so insecure. Now my whole world has been rebuilt, and I'm not going to lose it again.